Now, coming back to the issue. You kept saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Can you translate Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for me? Peace and blessings be upon him. No, it doesn't mean blessings. Let me repeat it again. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The word Sallam means peace. There is no word blessing in that phrase. Can you literally translate Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Peace be upon him, I believe. No. Peace be upon him is... <clears throat> Alayhi salam. Salam. The word for peace is salam. So let me okay. go back over the phrase again. Sallallahu. Sallallahu. Alayhi upon him. Wa salam. Salam is the word peace. What's the word sallam? Sallallahu. I don't know. You are literally saying, may the prayers of Allah be on him and peace. Literally, sallah is the word for prayer. When you pray five times a day, what do you call it in Arabic? Salah. Say it again. Salah. Now let me repeat the phrase. Salah lahu. Salah lahu. The prayers of Allah. That's what it literally means. The word for blessing is baraka. Baraka. B-A-R-A-K in transliteration. So I'm going to ask you a question. You literally just said, the prayers of Allah be on him and peace. Yep. Who does Allah pray to when he prays for Muhammad? Well, I think this is, again, the whole Arabic thing, so I don't... No, I'm giving you if, the Arabic. I'm just going to say I don't know every answer, every question. So. Well, let, let me repeat the Arabic for you. There are three words. Baraka, blessing. It's not used in this phrase. Salam, peace, which is used. And Salah, which means prayer. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam literally means the prayers of Allah be upon him and peace. So that's Arabic. I've even written articles and I've debated Muslims on this. The word Salah, Salawat, plural for prayers. So I want to know who does your God Allah pray to when he prays for Muhammad? You didn't answer the question. Uh, he prays for Muhammad. To who? With your prayers, you're going to talk to someone, right? To who? Who does he pray to when he prays for Muhammad? Uh, I don't think he needs to pray to anyone. But he does. Sallallahu means he's praying. So who's yeah, he praying to himself? Just praying. It doesn't say to anyone. Okay, so but when you pray, you just you just pray and you're not praying to anyone? So when you pray you, to no one or you're praying to someone? It's my intention to pray to Allah, yes. So when Allah prays, is he praying to himself or he's just throwing out words out there for no one? Does, I don't know in the law's intentions. So you can't tell what Allah is doing when he even tells you what he's doing when he gives you the words. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when it says sallam, what does sallam mean? Peace. So what does Allah do? Muhammad, peace. So what does Allah do? Give him peace, right? Yeah. But how do you know? You don't know Muhammad's intentions. I mean, Allah's intention. So how do you know he's giving peace? Because that's, see, this is your argument. Well, when Allah is uh, salah, prayer, I don't know what his intention is. But now you surely knew his intention that he wants to give Muhammad peace. So how do you know his intention was to give Muhammad peace? But when he prays, you don't know what his intention is. Well, how he did just, you know says, he just says he does. So it's Okay, so he does. So he just prays and he just gives peace. But you don't know who he prays to, right? Nope. In 3356 of the Quran, it says, Allah and his angels... Pray upon the prophet, and you who believe, pray for him and salute him. Yeah. Right? You salli alayhi. You salli. So it says, Allah and the angels perform salah on Muhammad. You salli, right? Yep. Ala Nabi. Okay. When the angels perform salah, they're praying. Who do they pray to? They're praying for Muhammad. For, but to angels, who? Yeah. To who? When they well, pray to who? They're praying to, I would assume, Allah. So you would assume but you don't it, know it doesn't say anyway. Man, if they don't pray to Allah and they pray to themselves, then that means they're committing shirk. You just damned these angels to hell. I didn't say they're praying to themselves. Okay, so when it says Allah and the angels, you saloon ala nabi. You saloon ala nabi. 
Yeah, I don't I don't know Arabic, so okay. It's, well, I'm gonna translate it. Allah is angels. Pray Allah means over or upon the Prophet. So when the angels perform salah prayer, who do they pray to? Do you need to really ask that question? Okay, let's go with the second part. And it says, And you who believe, salu alayhi. You salu alayhi, pray upon him. Pray upon Muhammad. When you pray for Muhammad, who do you pray to? Allah. When the angels pray for Muhammad, who do they pray to? Allah. When Allah prays for Muhammad, who does he pray to? That you don't know, huh? It doesn't say. Yes, it does. You just said it. Just said it. Because when it says Allah and his angels pray, and you pray, you just admit for anyone, when angels and believers pray, it's to Allah. It's the same sentence. Allah, angels, and believers all pray. You can tell me that the angels and the believers pray to Allah, but you can't tell me who Allah prays to. Yeah. All right. At least you're honest, and you're wanting to live in denial. Okay, that's good. Now, the, the other question related to is, why are you praying for Muhammad? Is he not in a state of peace? Uh, just um, formalities, I guess. Oh, formality. So, yeah, yeah, you know, just Allah's wasting our time having us pray for Muhammad. It's just formality. Well, so you, five don't, times a day. you don't believe in niceties, so I don't expect you to understand. Can you show me where Allah says it's for formality and niceties? Or are you putting words in the no, mouth? I, of I was just saying that's what I that's what I assumed it would be. I don't I'm care not what saying the Quran says this. You need to prove it because you can't just tell me your opinion. You're not a prophet. You're not a messenger. You're not an Adam. You're not a scholar. You got to be careful what you say. Can you show me where in the Quran or the Sunnah says it's a nicety, it's a formality? Mm, I believe there's a hadith somewhere. Formality and nicety? No, it doesn't say that. No, no not that literally. Not that literally. In fact, didn't Muhammad say in the sound hadith that if, if you don't pray for him during the five times, five daily prayers, your prayer is incomplete and won't reach Allah? That's why when you pray five times a day, you do tashahud, don't you? Mm, yep. Okay. Can you repeat to me what tashahud is? Like do you want the Arabic or what? Give me Arabic and translate it for me. Because you they taught it to you, obviously. You've been praying for a year five times a day. Go to Chef Google to help you if you need. Sorry. No, I have it written down already. Go ahead. Slowly repeat the shahud and then translate it for everyone to see. I can just do English if you want. Okay, Excuse do the English me. because I want to make sure you translate it correctly. But go ahead. Go do the English. Um, uh, all greetings of humility are for Allah and all prayers and goodness. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. Okay, bango, stop there. Say it again. Peace be upon you. Finish the sentence. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. Okay. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. And then what do you say? And the mercy of Allah and his blessings. Okay. Now, Re repeat that one sentence. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. Repeat that entire sentence, that section that you have to pray five times a day. It has to be part of your prayer. Peace be upon you, O Prophet, and the mercy of Allah and his blessings. Okay, now let me ask you a question. According to chapter 39, verse 30 of the Quran, it says, Muhammad shall die, and they will die, and Muhammad is dead and buried. You agree with that, right? Uh, Yeah. Okay, so he's dead. So can you? I can ask you a question. Why are you talking to a dead man thousands of miles away from his grave? Well, it says he will die. It doesn't mean that he's like dead right oh, now. Oh, so he's still alive. So all alive. He goes, you'll die and they will die too. So those people died already. He goes, you will die and they will die too. Didn't they die? Yeah, everyone will die eventually. Uh, did Muhammad die? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Like not. Oh, you mean when they die, he died? And they buried him in Medina. That wasn't Muhammad. So who was it? Was it his genie? No, I mean, we taste death, but the soul hasn't died yet. That's The Quran doesn't qualify that if you die, it's not really death. Because I'm telling you, it says you will die. Yes, I know what death is when your soul leaves. But you will die, 
And that's why, according to your Bukhari and Muslim, when o Omar found out Muhammad died, he took a sword and he was going to kill anyone who said Muhammad died. And then Abu Bakr recited chapter 3, verse 144. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and the messengers before him have died. So when he dies, will you turn on your heels and abandon the faith? He recited that to remind Omar that the messenger died like all messengers die. So whether you like it or not, Allah is the ever-living, serve him. So do I need to repeat your history for you? So Muhammad died. So let's stop the tap dance. And they buried him three days later. So my question is, you're thousands of miles away from where Muhammad is dead and buried. Why are you talking to him in your prayer? Uh, I don't believe he's, like, dead. Oh, so you believe he's hearing you, then? Yeah. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah. Okay. So in your five daily prayer, you, you speak to Allah and you speak to a dead man, and you don't see that you're a pagan idolater? Because your five daily prayers are supposed to be directed to Allah where you talk to him. You just admit you talk to him and this dead man, and you say he can hear you. So you're now talking to Allah and Muhammad. Who else do you yeah, talk to in your five daily yeah. prayers that are supposed to be offered to Allah? Who else do you talk to? Um, I believe. Well, I'm not. I'm not sure if Abraham hears it, but we do make. Uh, no, you don't you talk to Abraham. Abraham. No, you don't. What you do oh, is well, say, that's why well, I said I don't know. If, I don't know if he hears it, but we. No, uh, you don't talk to Abraham. You ask Allah to pray for Muhammad and his family, as you pray for Abraham's family. And yeah. bless Muhammad and his family as you bless Abraham's family. That's not talking to, you're asking Allah to bless. But okay. in this line, you're talking to Muhammad. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. Yeah. So who else do you talk to besides Allah and this dead man in your prayers five times a day? Mm, no one. No one else? I don't think so. So then you just admit... You talk to Allah five times a day, which is worship. Isn't ibadah the heart of worship your prayer? Yeah. So your five daily prayers are worship, right? Yeah. And how do you worship Allah? By talking to him, right? Mm, by praying, yeah. Yeah. Well, what is prayer? Talking to him. Or are you just talking to the genie next to you? Talking to him, right? Uh, it's not eh, just uh, talking. but Yeah. When you pray, you are talking and conversing. Do I need to get you a dictionary to what, know what talking is? When I say, oh, Allah, that means I'm communicating. I'm I speaking. am talking. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm speaking. Okay. So I want you to understand, you just admit it's recorded. In your five daily, daily prayers, which is the, the worship, the art of worship, you're talking to Allah and a dead man, and you still don't see how you just confirmed you're worshiping Muhammad like you worship Allah. Because you're talking to two persons in your five daily prayers, which is the heart of your worship. So you're dividing your worship between Allah and this dead man. And you're okay with it? Uh, he's not dead. Okay, he's alive. But you're okay with it though? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm glad you dead, you're okay definitely. being a pagan, an idolatrous pagan. Now let me add to your paganism. Now your prophets kissed and smothered the black stone. And when you perform hajj, pilgrimage, it is sunnah that you, if you can, if the crowds are too too long, kiss and smother that black stone. You okay with that too? Yeah, it's a sunnah. Oh, okay. So you're okay with taking an inanimate stone, kissing it like your prophet did, and then <clears throat> touching it like your prophet did, and weeping on it like your prophet did, and you still don't say that you're a pagan idolater? Yeah. Okay, excellent, beautiful. Am I you're honest? And do you also believe that this stone is going to come to life and intercede for you? It's going to be given eyes and a tongue to intercede for you? Sure. Sure, okay. And you also believe that it was white and turned black from you pagans kissing it, absorbing your sin? I haven't heard that. Well, I'll give it to you right now. I'll give you. I'm, I'm, this is very – we're happy because we're excited to at least have a Muhammad admit he's a Muhammadan and he's a pagan, but he doesn't realize it. Thank you, sir. Hold on. Let me get you the head. Appreciate you, man. Do I have time to change my laundry, if you don't mind? Go ahead, yeah, go ahead, because you're going to need to. I know, maybe you soiled yourself. You're probably going to have to change. Go ahead. <laughs> it makes you laugh. I like you, buddy. <laughs> Here you go. Here it is. Here's the link again. Kitab al-Hajj, book 24, from 
Sunan Nasai, Nasai, Sunan Nasai, Volume 3, Book 24, Hadith 2922. Hassan, it's good. But what does it say? I'm just waiting for him to come back. All right, there you go. I'm back. I'm back. Okay, now here, I guess here's the link. Can you read it for us? Yeah. It was narrated from Abdullah ibn Ubaid bin Umayr that a man said, Oh, Abu Abdul Rahman, why do I only see you touching these two corners? He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, Touch the, Touching them erases sins. Does what? The two black corners, sins. one of them includes a black stone. So does what? Erases sins. Oh, so touching the and two corners, before you move on, touching the two corners, one of them includes a black stone corner. Erases your sin, huh? Yeah. Are you okay with that? Yeah. So a black stone that's an inanimate object that can neither harm nor benefit you, according to Umar ibn al-Khattab, but if you kiss it and touch it and weep on it, it will then erase your sin. And it turned black from all the sins of those who touched it and kissed it. And then Allah will bring it to life and give it a tongue and eyes to intercede for you. So this black stone is going to be your intercessor. And you have no problem with that. Um, I'm not trying to be disagreeable, but do you have when it says yeah, it I, becomes black? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Dude, come on, man. Don't make it easy for me, sir. Okay. Here, let me get it for you. Here it is. Here's the hadith. Go ahead. Read it for me, bro. My brother in humanity. Uh, Ibn Abbas narrated that the messenger of Allah said the black stone descended from the paradise and it was more white than milk than it was blackened by the sins of the children of Adam. You caught it? So yep. do I need to give you more hadiths to prove that whatever I'm telling you, I try to be as solid and factual as possible. I make mistakes, but that's not intentional. So you're okay. I just want everyone to understand. You're okay with this inanimate black stone. That was there before Muhammad. That was venerated by the pagans in Arabia. You're okay with kissing it, touching it, weeping on it. You're okay with it turning black from your sins. And you're okay with it erasing your sins if you venerate it. And you're okay with it coming to light. Where Allah will give it eyes and a tongue to then intercede for you, to save you. And appease Allah to forgive you. You're okay with all that? Uh, sure. All right. Yeah. And so you really don't see you're a pagan idolater, huh? Oh, yeah. That's like, hey, man, whatever floats your boat. I'm, just, I'm glad that you're okay with it. Now, yep. why did your prophet adopt the pagan practice? And why did Omar, when he went to kiss the black stone, he goes, I know that you're a stone that neither benefits nor harms. Had I not seen the messenger of Allah kiss you, I would not kiss you. So why did he adopt this pagan practice? Because the pagans were venerating the black stone. Allahu Alam, I don't know. Allah oh, Allahu Alam, I don't know. Interesting. Okay. So here you're telling me you became a Muslim because the concept of God, Allah's just, and this and that. And yet, all of these issues that you have been asked about and you have no clue why you do them or why Muhammad did them, and you're okay with it. Okay, amazing.